I'm going to redo me and John Boy's hike from uh, Silica Dome there to the pinnacles. I'm going to try to get down to see if I can get down among the pinnacles down below to get away from the, all the tourists. Um, I'll document this hike for people who want to do it because, you know, it's a good short hike over from the, the parking lot of Silica Dome. Me and John did this hike. I remember that as we walked across, he was wondering if I was getting us lost. <laughs> you know, because I was just walking across the fields. You know, no path. I think he's used to paths or something. Anyway, Silica Dome, there's some people for perspective. People like Silica Dome. I don't know what the uh, the allure is, but that's where Captain Kirk got killed. The right side. See the extreme right side? He fell off of there. When people hike up there, they're not even close to where he fell or died down below. Okay, so you start walking down the road. The bottom line is you don't need to know where to go because you, you see the mesa. Bottom line is you're just heading over to that edge of the mesa. Any way you want to go. It makes no difference. You're going to end up there. See, I crossed over the ravine and here's the path. This path. Well, I don't care. Okay, you just head over there. Explore. Just go where you want. Any, any way you want to get over there is a lot more interesting. You just head over to that end of the mesa. Uh, this is all Cretaceous. I didn't realize it until just recently. See those colors, those light colors, blue, greens, yellows? That's Cretaceous. You could find a T-Rex tooth in there. And they do, and they have. Now you see that hill. You know, there's like a mining road or something going up it, but I don't want to go up there and walk all along the Top of it. Well, let's see. Yeah, I think I will. Uh, but anyway, on our hike, me and John, I'm just wandering along the desert like this, going, well, let's see, we go left or go right. Okay, so he started getting worried, but for good reason. Remember that when he came up and visited, he already knew my stories. That got to, the guy has almost died out there several times. I mean, you know, but this is not one of those hikes. Okay, I'm gonna walk along. I'm gonna I'm gonna go up that road. Let's let's see what's there. Uh, anyway, this is Cretaceous. You can tell the difference when you pass into it. This Cretaceous is uh, gravels and sands and silts that wash down from a severe overthrust into the lowland below, the basin below, that was heavy with lakes. Uh, small rivers, swamps, very wet. So this material washed down into it. all of it is uh, sand, silts, and gravels that flooded down. And yes, uh, the tyrannosaurs were there, and uh, you know the the type of dinosaurs you recognize. Those were there. Those were there. Most of the fossils they get are those. Big crocodiles, I forget the name right now, those big crocodiles from 100 million years ago. Uh, turtles, fish, fish scale, Tyrannosaur and other bones and teeth. But no intact skeletons. Okay, I'm now in the Cretaceous. And this was tropical. This was tropical, by the way. It was only like uh, 20 degrees above the equator. 
So you just have to force yourself to try to imagine that it was tropical and these are floodstones that went into lakes, bogs, stuff like that. Uh, I'm recording this on all trails, so anybody that wants uh, the path, the exact path, if you don't like to find your own way and you just want to follow the path, just let me know. Let's see what this view is. I'll let you see it real time. See? Now that's 190 million years old, Navajo Aztec sandstone. But this Cretaceous is in the range of about 100 million. So I'll just work my way across. But you see the edge of the mesa? That's all you need to know. Uh, it's uh, March 21st and uh, good temperatures. I'm already sweating like Harvey Weinstein under a pile of starlets. The, uh, the top of the mesa let me explain the unconformity. Unconformity. Um, the sandstone is 190 million and uh, the Rainbow Gardens uh, conglomerate on top is 32, 32 million. So that's an unconformity, meaning that uh, I don't want to do the math. What is it? 100 million years is missing. So that conglomerate in the books, it would say, it lies unconformably on the top of the sandstone. What that means is it wasn't like putting pages in a book steadily. There was a huge gap. And then that material got deposited. It, that sandstone surface layer you see up there that's flat was sitting eroding for millions of years. Look at how the color of the Cretaceous stands out. That special color. Here you don't see it uh, because you're looking at the back side and it's covered with rubble. see that the white material is Aztec sandstone that uh, reduction fluids, reducing fluids have flowed through it and bleached it. Took off the outer layer of the sand grains, the iron oxide. The pinnacles, when I get to the pinnacles, it's that same material. The Cretaceous is over there, see? Remember, there's always the option if a person doesn't want to listen to my preaching and they're not interested in geology, just turn the sound off. Just glitch the sound. So that, that blue Cretaceous over there, I'm going over there and then work my way down. If I can't get down, I'll have to turn back and then come back and, and go in there and work over from down below. Uh, I want to say something about the reducing fluids, which could have been oil and gas and or water. Remember, it was under heat and pressure. But that's where you get your nice colors, when you're on the edge of it. If you're in there, it's just bleached pure white. If you're in there, it's just straight red. But when you see the pinkish colors, that's where you get the, the nice colors and the nice lines. I'm, obviously, I'm not there yet. The pinnacles should be really cool. I've never actually went down and walked among them.
this is Shinarum conglomerate and I want to mention about it because see see it there that's Shinarum conglomerate however don't picture like pages of a book because this area is complex see this material it, it was bulldozed up and over the top of this stuff that you're seeing and so all these different layers the Shinarum uh, Carnian, which Shinrump is, it's in the same zone. It got bulldozed up over and spilled out and washed out all over the surface. So you see these these strange things. You go, what's that doing here? How'd it get here? Well, that that's why. It's very complex. It would take me too long to explain it. And I know people don't want to hear that. When I'm filming, I can't see the screen. This camera does not have a viewfinder. This is a Canon 80D. So I point the camera, and I'm not that sure what it's seeing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to work left. Uh, Cretaceous water deposited. When you see this, this white white bluish color like this you're looking at um, he heavily uh, based on water in in water standing water uh, lake bottom stuff like that because what you're looking at is carbonates and so if you put that in um, vinegar it will bubble So this was long-standing water. Um, I just want to mention that as far as finding a, a T-Rex skeleton or a T-Rex skull, it's not going to happen. Uh, that's why the paleontologists aren't that interested in the willow tank formation here in Nevada. Because the fossils are all disarticulated, they're bits, they're bits and pieces. When they did multiple digs here, uh, they had to use water and sifters. They did find uh, Tyrannosaur teeth, stuff like that, but everything they found over a long period of searching and shifting and shipping in water, you could hold in the palm of your hand. Just bits that prove they were there, but you don't have the intact skull that the people want. Therefore, few people have interest in this area. Um, this is this is Josh Bundy's area, Josh Bondy. So, uh, in other words, to come here uh, and think you're going to find a six-inch banana-type T-Rex tooth, it's they're here, but you could search a lifetime and never find one. The most common fossil from this material are fish scales, fish, big fish scales from uh, giant pike type fish. I'm looking back at Silica Dome for reference. Right about there, that's what the human eye sees. See, I'm coming up to the edge of the mesa. Get there any way you want. It don't make no difference. That's the fun of exploring. You know, half the time I come in from wandering around out there on the valley floor and I work my way up this way. It makes no difference. If you're on a path, you automatically cannot discover anything or find anything because you're walking where everybody walks. If you go cross country, God knows what you might happen, happen upon. This is a sheer dangerous cliff. If you come up here, be be very cautious. I don't mean falling. I mean the edge, the entire edge can give way at any time. But there's the pinnacles. 
And now I want to see if I can work my way down. See, see, look at that one. You see how that whole thing, you could be 20 feet away and the whole thing could give way. It does happen. I've been up on top of the mesa a couple times. One of them was one of my hikes of death, of almost death, because I got to the end here and thought I was just going to work down. Well, it's impossible. There is a way to work down, um, but, you know, they have people guide. Somebody has to have been here for years and guide you down, and even then it's high risk. And so I, I went back up and worked my way over just behind where you can see and made my way down, and believe me, I mean barely. <laughs> uh, I was out of water, it was hot. Uh, when I got back to the van, that was one of the times I could barely stand up from lack of water and heat. See the edges, the edges there, and you see why even the rams, even the rams stay back 20 feet. <laughs> you know, they, they don't go up to the edge. They really don't. I don't know if it's fear or what. <laughs> Going across some uh, beautiful Cretaceous here. If I can't work my way down over there, I have no choice but to go back. Yeah, I could go down there. The problem is I'd be killed. So let me let me work over. See when you're up there looking out over the viewpoint and you're standing on the rim. That's what you're standing on. Now there's the famous view where I took Christian's picture and, and John's picture. Everybody stands here and takes this picture. I'm going to go down there and work over and see if there's a way down there, but I can already tell you it's hopeless. Okay, I'm going to try to go there. I've got rope. Uh, but I can tell you that it's it's hopeless. Let's see. I might be able to make it. Piece of cake. I did it. Now I got to uh, work my way through and cut over towards the, back towards the direction of Silica Dome and then hopefully find, find a way up. Uh, but at all times, I never go past the point water-wise where if I have to turn back, I couldn't make it. If I reach that point, I go back by the known route. Let's go over there. Another method for my narration, which isn't good, is to turn the volume down way low so it isn't as uh, tedious.
Oh, look at that little hoodoo. Look at that little hoodoo. That's the cutest little hoodoo I ever seen. That's what a hoodoo is, by the way. Do the reducing fluids that flow through here that dissolve the iron oxide coating off of the grains of sand, do they weaken the sandstone? They most certainly do. And that's why the, the Simplot mine, which is over there, about two miles, uh, open pit mine some of the purest silica in the world because it can be easily bulldozed. Because with the iron, the iron oxide on it, like you see there, it ruins the glass. Let's see what we have up here. I'm letting you see this real time. Okay. I've, I've got to go back and work around. The weakening of the sand by the bleaching, this is a good time to, to show it. See, there's sandstone. And it's, it's pretty intact, but... See there? That, that's what Simplet Mine Mines pure silica because you can bulldoze it. That you're not going anywhere. If you want to go up on the mesa up there, by the way, the way to do it is go up. Don't try to come down that mess coming down. Go up this, this side, walk across the top, and then the way to get down on the other end is very easy. But not over here. See, it's like another planet. This is like Gornland, where they did the Star Trek, uh, the fight with the Gorn. <laughs> so I'm leaving the Pinnacles. It's okay. You know, it, it's okay. It, it's not earth shattering. Now I'm going to work over and find a way up to Silica Dome where I'm parked. The flowers are nice, by the way. Don't think I, I don't like the flowers. I do. Let's see if I'm coming up to a cliff here. I'll let you see it real time. See, I'm being led into a labyrinth of channels and stuff. 
so I, I do have to be able to get back. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down there, work to the right, and make an assessment. A lot of times I put markers like that because that's where I come down. And so if I have to come back at night and have to, you know, go back the way I came, I mean, look at it. You don't know where you were. <laughs> you know, that's, that's how people get lost and get stranded where they have to weather the night, you know. So, and I do stuff like I, I go like this and mark my tracks real well. Okay, my assessment is that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go back. You can see I'm deeply buried in this kind of stuff. I could, uh, you know, work my way over, but if you look at that landscape, I could, I could be in there hours to make a few hundred yards. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back because, like, if it was early morning, I would try to find a way through there, but not when it's, you know, getting late. <clears throat> So I'm going to work my way back, and there's the pinnacles, the top of the pinnacles area. So I'll work my way back, but if I can go left and work my way up something, I'll do that. But I'm going to keep focused on where I was, in, instead of going deeper and deeper and deeper and it starts getting dark. Uh, I'm prepared. Uh, I could weather the night. I have two flashlights. I'll check this one out. <clears throat> Those things there are nasty. Oh. No, you see what I mean? You could be headed into a nightmare. There's a lizard up on that rock. Silica dome with people up on top. I can't go up through there, but maybe up here. Uh, I always keep it in reserve to uh, cut back over and, and go up the way I came. Let's see if I can do it. Also, you can get up there, up to the top. It could turn out you're on the top of a pinnacle. You're not necessarily coming out on the top of the land, so let's find out.
See the old tracks? That could be an indication I could get up there. I'm going to check it out. But the way I came down is just right there anyway. Uh, this is a Horse Spring Formation, a Rainbow Gardens, Rainbow Gardens member. It's fallen down from the top of the mesa. A good part of the reason that mesa is there with a sandstone that goes all the way up is that this caps it. It caps it like, so it's a form of a hoodoo. Beautiful piece of uh, Shinarump, Shinarump conglomerate. I'm about done recording. See, when you're up there looking out over the viewpoint and you're standing on the rim, That's what you're standing on. Uh, when you're coming up from below, you've got to be all the way over. I mean, all the way over to where you're right up against the red sandstone of the mesa. I made it back up. Uh, when you're down there, it's almost anticlimactic compared to when you're up above looking at it. It's okay if you want to go down there. Now I'm right back in the Cretaceous. Look at that beautiful Cretaceous. All of that is. So I'm going to work back cross country, work to the left back to Silica Dome. So the whole time uh, if you come out here and do this, you'll, you'll be going right across uh, Prime Cretaceous. Um, if you have a find, it would be something like a little tooth that you probably wouldn't notice. It would be totally random. You wouldn't find, a, like I said, a skeleton or a skull. You know, you could find a vertebrae uh, or something like that. I do keep my eyes open. But this is Cretaceous. Willow tank formation. But not that, not the red stuff. Okay, that's it for the recording. See, it's, it's no wonder John was wondering if I knew where we were going. I mean, there's nothing there that's visible. It shows where you're at, but I knew I'd been here before. Some very nice ironstone concretions out here. That's what this is. A magnet or a needle, whatever. It's, nothing has any effect on it. The amount of iron is very small. Uh, and that's because the Cretaceous was also exposed to the reducing fluids. The reducing fluids that came through that bleached out the, the sandstone also hit this stuff. See all the, the passageways of calcite and stuff? It also bleached this stuff. And then if it hit uh, fresh groundwater, then it precipitates the iron back out and forms ironstone. Uh, to come here and look for T-Rex tooth, I mean, I've walked along here for years. It's nothing. You know, so there's no coming out here and looking for fossils. There really isn't. And even if you did see something, you're better off to document it and get the notoriety for it. You can't sell it. You can't do nothing with it. Besides, in here, this is Valley of Fire. It'd be highly illegal. Uh, to smuggle something out of here. 
you know, you want to look for a tooth? Okay, start looking. Keep looking. Now do that for years and you never will see one. 